Hey guys, part two. I'm having to be my own photographer today, so <laughs> forget the bloopers and the blunders. But this is Karen Shakir with Game Changers. And we are a business and development and coaching service. And today we're going to talk about how to open a home. Uh, a daycare center. We did home daycares already. Now we're going to talk about how opening a daycare center with little or no money. How do you do that? Well, first off, you don't go big, especially if you don't have any money. So as opposed to looking for 45, 50, or 100 uh, child holding daycare centers that can hold that many children, you want to look for a smaller building, something that will hold at least 25 children. You also want to look for something that has two doors and lots of windows and a place for a playground because you got to have a fenced in playground. So make sure you have that adequate neighborhood, neighborhood, neighborhood. Neighborhood is everything. You don't want to put a daycare center inside a neighborhood unless there's a busy street nearby. But if you're on a busy street, perfect, perfect idea. And always look for being on a busy street where there are apartments and homes nearby uh, on the off cut. But uh, any, any approval by the state uh, when you open a, a daycare center, you're going to have to get codes, regulations, fire is going to have to come out, codes is going to have to come out, health department is going to have to come out, and environmental. So for you to get those particular approvals, it's going to take you anywhere from six to eight weeks. And in Tennessee, and you do need to call your particular government department, Human Service Child Care Division, to find out what the rules and regulations are. But if in the state of Tennessee, you are allowed to keep eight children. So you want to keep those eight children at that center. Once you pay that first month's rent, this will allow you to continue to be able to pay your lights, your water, and your rent and not be open, but you have eight children there while you're working on your paperwork. Uh, paperwork and phone calls and keep copies of everything because these people going through so many people, everybody loses everything. You're going to need a plan. You're going to need a um, uh, engineer to engineer. You're going to need an engineer if you go over 25 children. I know in our state, we don't need one. If we're under 25 children, we can kind of draw that plan out ourselves for the fire department with the exits. You're going to need your exit lights over your doors. You're going to need a uh, smoke detector alarm system in the place. And alarm systems and smoke detectors can be purchased uh, from any AT&T company or any particular company. And I know Department of Human Services usually has a list of authorized dealers that they deal with, but they'll come out and bill you for it as well. Uh, so you're going to need all these mechanisms put in place. Your kitchen is going to have to be up to par. I do suggest not opening with a stove. Open with a microwave. It makes a big difference. If you open with a stove, there's certain other regulations that you have to go through with the health department. You have to have a hood that can cost into the thousands of dollars. Refrigerator, microwave. Keep it simple until you get going. You do have to have a three compartmental sink, which runs about $135 on Amazon uh, for water, soap, and sanitation. And that's it. That's basically what's it, what it's going to cost you out of pocket to get started or the things that you kind of need to have in hand that absolutely would not um, get you approved without. It's also a fire extinguisher. You're going to have to have your fire extinguisher updated and you're going to have to have the bigger one, not the one you have at the home, the next size up. So these are a couple of things to get you started when you think about when you're opening a center. But like I said, you can keep those eight children in there and that'll help offset some of that that payment. So go ahead and start advertising. Free advertisements, advertisement is on Craigslist or Facebook page that wants nannies or for child care homes or uh, child care centers. You can go ahead and get on there and start advertising. Tell your friends, your friends to tell other friends, advertise on Facebook. Make your Facebook page for your daycare center. Go ahead and put all those mechanisms in place and start marketing your daycare before you open. And you can go ahead and start getting your eight children in there to keep that offset. And I made notes so that I will basically. Another great place I like to go to or advise my clients to go to is Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree, if you have one in your city, has a great educational aisle, just a whole aisle for educational activities. And everything's a dollar. You got educational posters, flashcards, you have uh, borders to go around your classroom, you can get all your teacher supplies there, 
it's just a dollar. So um, hopefully you have a Dollar Tree there or something similar to a Dollar Tree where you can get these things. But Dollar Tree do have educational things there for you as well. Also Goodwill. Goodwill is a great place to furnish your classrooms. Remember, start small, then you go big. Start small, then you go big. So once you have uh, students filled in those seats and you're getting some actual revenue coming in, then you can go and get the really nice furniture and the up, upgrade each classroom one at a time. But to start out, you need to make things happen with what you got. Goodwill stores have plenty of toys you can sanitize, rugs you can uh, wash and put in the classrooms for your soft and cozy areas. Books can be purchased, oh well, not purchased, books can be given free. Uh, I know here the YMCA gives away books free, some of the libraries give away books free books for free especially if they're for children call up your girlfriends hey how about your kids books you want to donate some books to my daycare center a lot of people have books and they can definitely donate children books so that's a great way to start building your classrooms without paying any money another good example of um what I want to tell you to get started with no money is charge an application fee. Application fees can range from $35 to $50 per application fee uh, for them to get your their child in once they tour your location and make sure it's a great location and great fit for them. Um, so you can also do application fees uh, for each application you have and that's the way to get cash before even the children get there. Once the children get there, I make it a rule. You always want your parents to be a week ahead. Make them pay that first week up front because you don't want to keep someone's child an entire week and then they decide on Friday, oh, I just want them to go to a different daycare so I don't feel like I have to pay you. Then you would have kept that child for an entire week and don't have anything to show for it. Another thing I like for parents to do is bring in, you ask your parents to bring in Pampers, Kleenex, wipes, all those things and the pricing that you range for your child care. Oh, and let's speak about pricing. Do not undercut yourself. Call four or five child care centers within the proximity of your particular center and find out what they're charging. You charge the same thing. Infants are always gonna be higher and also keep in mind if you have infants in your infant room, your ratio is gonna be higher, which means, uh, I know in the state of Tennessee, there are only four infants for every adult teacher. So therefore, you got to do some math and calculate and see if it's even worth your opening an infant room because you're going to have to pay salary for every fourth child to an additional worker to come in there. And salary means from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Um, Monday through Friday. So you need to weigh your options in terms of employees calculating how much you're going to have to pay your employees versus how much you have coming in. I do suggest that starting out that you kind of keep it minimized and always include yourself. I know as owners, guess what? You're gonna have to know how to do everything. So as an owner starting out, especially with no money, you're gonna have to be in some of those classrooms sometimes to minimize your income, your outcome, outgoing cash, to minimize your bills so your profit uh, 